verse three of Love Lifted Me says, souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. He will lift you by his love out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. He your savior wants to be, be saved today. The third verse of Love Lifted Me extends the personal experience of salvation to a universal call to those in spiritual peril, emphasizing Jesus' power and willingness to save all who turn to him. It offers a message of, of hope and urgent appeal to receive salvation. So let's explore this verse in, in detail with some scriptures. Souls in danger look above. Jesus completely saves. This line directly addresses individuals who are spiritually at risk, urging them to, to look beyond their, their circumstances and towards Jesus for salvation. The phrase that Jesus completely saves underscores the completeness and sufficiency of Jesus' salvation, which is total and leaves nothing undone. This truth is reflected in, in Hebrews 7.25, and in the New International, it, it states it this way, Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to him God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. This verse in Hebrews emphasizes Jesus' ongoing role as an intercessor who can fully save those who approach God through him, aligning closely with the, the hymn's message. Did you realize that, that he is constantly in interceding for you? I find that I've been serving God for, for years and, and I still am overwhelmed by that thought that Jesus intercedes for me. He talks to his father for me on behalf of me. But let's go on to the next part of this verse. It says, he will lift you by his love out of the angry waves He's the master of the sea, billows his will obey. These lines continue the metaphor of being rescued from a tumultuous sea or tumultuous seas, representing that there are troubles and sins that overwhelm us. The depiction of of Jesus as the master of the sea, whose commands even the waves obey, illustrates his, his supreme authority over nature and, by extension, all aspects of life. You see, we can be overwhelmed by sin. We can be drowning in those angry waves of sin. But Jesus is the master of the sea and the wind and the waves and the sins the trials they obey him but we have to ask him to help us you see the the authority of jesus over nature is is vividly portrayed in scripture in mark 4 39 where during a storm Jesus rebukes the wind and the waves. All he says is, quiet, be still. Now, th that one's out of the New International Version that says, quiet, be still. Some of the other ones say, peace, be still. Some say, silence, be still. Either way, it means the same thing. Jesus told the waves to be quiet and to be still. <laughs> 
the way so in 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 mark and four when he's the this is happening the wind dies down and, and it becomes completely calm so this miracle demonstrates his divine power and control and it provides a direct link back to the imagery used in the in this hymn I think it's so cool. I love how he says, quiet, be still. He's saying that to the sins in our life too. And he's saying it to us. Just, just be quiet and be still. Let me work on it. The next line says, he, your savior wants to be, be saved today. Now this line serves as both a declaration of Jesus desire to save and an urgent call to action for immediate response. It talks about the accessibility of salvation and the immediacy with which we can be saved. It doesn't take years. It doesn't take us reciting a bunch of of scripture. It doesn't take us bowing our knees a thousand times to, for us to be saved. All we have to do is ask him. He wants to be our savior. All we have to do is ask. Be saved today, immediately. As soon as we ask him to take our sins away, to forgive us of our sins, to come into our lives, to be our savior. It happens immediately. We don't have to wait for that. We can do it right now, wherever we are. We don't have to be in church. We don't have to be at an altar. <laughs> we can be saved anywhere. The urgency and accessibility of salvation are echoed in, in 2 Corinthians 6.2. In the New International Version, it puts it this way. For he says, In the time of my favor, I heard you. And in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. This verse invites us to recognize the present opportunity re to receive God's grace and salvation. Again, we don't have to wait, just as scripture tells us. And if you really want to think about it, if you think you can't, that you have to be in church or be at some altar or be with a, a, a group of people to, to talk you through a prayer, you don't. Think about the thief on the cross. There were two thieves hanging on each side of Jesus. The one was mocking him, but the other one said, I know who you are. Remember me when, when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus told him right then and there on the cross that today he would be with him in paradise. So you see, the, the, the thief didn't get down. He didn't get baptized. He didn't go to an altar. He didn't go to a church. He didn't go to the synagogue. Right then and there, Jesus told him, you are forgiven. You're going to be with me in paradise. You are saved. It, no, he didn't say that in so many words right then, but he said, you're going to be with me in paradise today. So that means that it, it, it's immediate. We don't have to wait. It's right there for us, wherever we are. We are. So overall, the, the third verse of Love Lifted Me emphasizes the power of uh, Jesus to save and his readiness to rescue all. Let me repeat that. His readiness to rescue all who are overwhelmed by life's angry waves. It calls for an immediate response to his offer of salvation, portraying Jesus as, as both the, the sovereign over all life's troubles 
and the personal Savior who desires to rescue each one of us. He's there. He's waiting. All we have to do is accept him and ask him to come into our lives. It's not rocket science, people. He wants us to come to him. It's not hard. The chorus of Love Lifted Me says, Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. When nothing else could help, love lifted me. Do you know how hard that is for me to read that without singing it? That's <laughs> it's a little challenging. But the chorus of Love Lifted Me is a powerful and repetitive affirmation of the transformative impact of God's love. Particularly in moments of deep despair or need. This, this refrain or chorus encapsulates the, the, the theme of the entire hymn and serves as a reminder of the source of every believer's rescue and salvation. That's God's love as expressed through Jesus Christ. Here's a breakdown of the chorus and its, its scriptural references. Love lifted me. Love lifted me. The repetition of love lifted me emphasizes the personal impact of God's love. It's a testament to how his divine love has raised us from a place of hopelessness the use of, of love with a capital L personifies it, attributing it, attributing it directly to God, aligning with our, 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 our knowledge and our truth that God is love as stated in, in first John four, eight, the concept of, of being lifted by God's love can, can be connected to Psalm 40 verse two, where the psalmist describes how God lifted him out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire and set his feet on a rock, giving him a firm place to stand. This metaphor of being lifted from a dire situation to a place of, of stability and safety parallels the hymn's message. And then it, the, the, the chorus goes on to say, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. This line speaks to the insufficiency of worldly aids or human efforts to provide salvation and help. Only God's love can do that. It highlights that when all other means fail, God's love remains and it remains unfailing and it is the source of rescue. This truth resonates with Ephesians 2 verses 4 through 5. In the New International it says, But because of his great love for us, God who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in, the trans in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. This passage underscores that it is solely by God's love and grace, not by human effort, that salvation is possible. He is the only way to salvation. So you see the, the, the chorus of love lifted me is a declaration of, of faith in the redeeming and uplifting power of God's love. 
it serves as a, a refrain that reinforces the message of salvation and renewal found throughout the hymn. And this emphasis on, on, on love as the means of, of spiritual rescue aligns closely with the, the Christian doctrine of grace. Grace is the unmerited favor given by God to humans, us, for our regeneration and sanctification. You see, it, it, it's only by his love and his grace through Jesus Christ that, that we are saved. We can be saved if we call on him, if we, if we acknowledge Jesus as our Savior. If we ask him to forgive us of our sins and come into our lives, take over our lives, we dedicate our lives to him and we worship him, then we can be, we can know God's grace and we can know salvation and we can know his uplifting and unmerited favor. I love that thought. Love lifted me. So in summary, Love Lifted Me is a hymn that, that deeply captures the Christian doctrine of salvation through God's love, specifically the love of Jesus Christ. It uses vivid maritime imagery to depict the peril of sin and the transformative rescue provided by Jesus. It emphasizes his power over natural and spiritual forces. Each verse and the chorus together construct a narrative of despair, deliverance, devotion, and a universal call to salvation, underlined by the refrain that, that extols and, and worships the lifting power of God's love. You see, verse 1 speaks of personal crisis and rescue, highlighting our, our desperate state and the miraculous intervention by Jesus. Verse 2 transitions into a response of devotion and lifelong praise, reflecting a commitment to live in Christ's presence and serve him faithfully. Verse 3 extends the message of salvation to all who will listen, emphasizing Jesus' readiness to save and the urgency of accepting his salvation because it is urgent. We don't know how long we have on this earth. Then the chorus reiterates the central theme that when all other solutions fail, and they will, because there is only one solution, the steadfast love and powerful love of God is both sufficient and transformative. His love and grace is the only solution to our hopelessness. So why do we still sing this hymn today? Is it still relevant to us? I am so glad you asked that question. <laughs> you see, there, there's universal themes in this, in this song. There's themes of sin, rescue, redemption, and devotion. Those themes are timeless. They resonate with the, the fundamental truths about human nature, the need for Christ's intervention, and the response of gratitude and service. Those are ongoing. It, it wasn't just back when the, this song was written. It's been throughout time, and it will be through the end of time until he comes back to get us. Then there's the emotional connection. The imagery 
and personal testimony style of the lyrics allow us to connect emotionally with the message, seeing our own life experiences reflected in the narrative of rescue and transformation. Because if, if you've ever, if you've ever been overwhelmed by sin or overwhelmed by life, you know that God is the only one who can rescue you. And Jesus will rescue you. He paid the price to rescue you. And he's just waiting for us to ask. Then there's the inspirational message. The hymn provides a message of, of hope and encouragement. It reassures us that no matter the depth of our despair or difficulty, God's love is a rescuing force. It, it's like the picture that, that you see in the background of the, God's hand reaching down to pull us out. Yeah, that's water. But to pull us out of that sin and that mud and that mire, that, that trials and the despairs and the difficulties, whatever we're going through. And again, it may not be physical. He may not pull us out physically from, from whatever situation that we're going through. But he will pull us out spiritually. He will give us the strength in our spirit to endure whatever we have to go through on this earth. Because he's got a purpose for whatever we go through. It may be consequences to our sins. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes, there's forgiveness, but there's, we may still have to pay the consequences. But he's going to use that for his glory. He will let us have a testimony through that time of, of despair and, and difficulty and sin and Everything that we go through, there is a purpose. But then there's the call to action. The urgent plea for salvation in, in the hymn addresses both believers and non-believers, making it a, a useful tool in evangelism and personal reflection on one's spiritual state. You see, Love Lifted Me encapsulates key aspects of Christian belief and, and spiritual, personal spiritual experience, making it a, a, a powerful and enduring piece of, of worship music. Its message of the capability of God's love to save and transform us continues to inspire and offer hope to many people today, making it as relevant today as it was when it was first written. Are you sinking in the waves of despair, in the angry waves? Are you sinking in that mud and that mire? Sinking deep in sin? I urge you to reach out and say, Lord, save me. He is right there waiting to pull you from that sin, to pull you from those difficulties. Yes, you may still have to go through the consequences. You may still have to go through the difficulties, but he will pull you out to him and he will walk with you through it and he will carry you through it and help you to survive it spiritually, especially. Let's pray. Lord, I am so thankful for the, for the fact that you lifted me out of the, the waves of despair and the, the waves of sin when I was drowning in my sinfulness and my hopelessness and my feelings of worthlessness. Lord, you know where I was. Lord, you know where you brought me from. Lord, I pray today that, that you will reach out to hearts, every heart that's listening, whether they're serving you now or not, or that you will speak to them through this message, that you will 
help them to realize that you are right there waiting for them to call out to you that you have not left, that you are waiting patiently for them to, to ask you to help them or give them the courage today to call out for help, to call to you, to say, Lord, I need you. Lord, save me. Lord, I pray all this in your son Jesus' name. Amen. I thank you for joining me on this journey through Love Lifted Me. We went in some deep waters today, but I think it's it's something that we all need because we all, no matter how long we've been serving the Lord or, or how long we've been alive, even if we're not serving the Lord, we go through times of of despair, times of difficulty, and times of feeling overwhelmed. We're like we're sinking. But we have to remember, all we have to do is say, Lord, save me. Lord, help me. And he is right there with us. Now, if you have not visited my website at phyllisjolliffe.com, I encourage you to do so. There are articles and, and poems and my original songs on there along with a link to my, my store that has shirts and phone cases and coffee mugs and different things on there that, that you might be interested in. It also has some, some poems on there, uh, poster poems, canvas prints, things like that. Anything and everything there, there's all kinds. I even have some blankets on there. Um, but check it out. You might be interested in something. And I want you to know how much I appreciate you taking the time to listen and time to, to respond and, and interact. I encourage you, if this, if this study has touched your life, share it with others. Be a light, even if it's just reposting a video or sharing it with someone. You have a great day. God bless you. I will see you in the next study.